Oh, oh wait! wait. <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah, no, do it. Go for it, Lucy. Go, go. You sure? Yeah. All right. Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for something a little bit different. Not quite sure what this video is going to be yet. It's either going to be a uh, Bower Spotlight, where I talk about a game crafter game, which in this case is Fate of the Mortals, but it's also a double dipper, as this is a Thoughts from the Corner with my game night. I got Adam, Jack, Lucy, and myself. Hey. Hi. And we just tried out Fate of the Mortals from Blue Eyed Games. Uh, this is on the Game Crafter, two to six players, 15 to 30 minutes, ages 10 plus. It's a little bit of an older game, but we got a chance to play it twice tonight. And we're going to be giving you our brutal, honest opinions about it. So we'll start with Lucy. Oh, yeah. Um, it was a pretty nice game, but maybe at two to at like six players is a bit much for our game group. And like... It was overall a good game, but I didn't personally like it that much. I mean, because of the randomness. Like, you only have, like, three cards to choose between the dungeons, and it just didn't really... You don't have much control in the turns. And six players, yeah, and I think we're all going to agree with you on... At six mm -hmm. players, and I would say five players, I think two to four would probably be the ideal if you want control. But I think this... I think the thing that I'm looking for at this is a family game. I think I could teach this to the eight, nine, and ten-year-olds in my class, no problem at all, and I think they would eat this up. And before I review it, I'm definitely going to play it in my class with the kids, and I don't think they're going to mind the randomness nearly as much. Oh, yeah. So what I try and always look at is the target demographic, which I don't know necessarily if it is going to be a game night, because it is nice, it can be a filler weight game, but at the same time, I think this is going to go over much more with families as opposed yeah. to your typical game night. What do, you, what do you think? Adam? Well, uh, for me, uh, a game with randomness needs to also be quick. Uh, this game was quick, yeah, and it was random, so I'm I'm fine with it that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, we had a good time playing it. Uh, I think that there was, <laughs> I mean, I just just trying to kill everybody essentially because yeah, that's the thing. Like as soon as like you realize that like some things are like unattainable, you're just gonna be like, okay, murder, murder, murder. Well, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, it would have been a better idea to just try and get people out of the temple rather, with no no loot rather than try and kill them all. Oh, it's funny. Because you're giving yeah. people, right. other people points as long as it's not a guy that you need to kill. Now, Lucy, did you use your hidden passages? Oh, uh, yeah, I used like, it in the first game. By the time I, the second game came around, it wasn't much I could do. I don't I think I want to you... jump in. Oh, go ahead. Well, I just want to say, this might not hit all of your audience, but I really like the theme. I think the whole idea of guiding mortals through this perilous dungeon, it's very old school dungeon quest, dungeon crawler, like, yeah, it's a resource, or it's a Euro game at heart as far as you're trying to score the most victory points, but the whole idea of just guiding your mortals, either trying to put them to certain doom or trying to get them to get the correct item and then get to the exit as fast as possible, it's very much in that old school dungeon crawler vibe. And for me, that's super cool, even if it is a Euro-style game. And yeah, I, I don't think we really mentioned this, uh, but the brief synopsis is there's six mortals in this dungeon, and you are all playing as gods, and you're constructing the dungeon, moving them around, uh, damaging them, having them picking up items, and we all have our own goals. So I might want the blue guy to die, whereas Jack might want the blue guy to get out with the heart, whereas Lucy might want the blue guy to get out with the, uh, the bow and arrow. And so we're all taking turns laying down a card, moving people around, and trying to kill them or get them with stuff and I, I the theme really didn't do anything for me personally but uh but that's what i like that's why i like having these diverse opinions because for me it's just we're moving around but uh yeah uh, i was definitely uh just having it out i was like oh this looks pretty cool well, on the table and it's a fun it's game feel to me. i think the biggest issue is the player count because kind of what lucy was getting said it's not so much the downtime it's the fact that you might have an idea in your head well huh. <laughs> five cards are gonna go out and it literally might not matter. Three of your options might yeah. be completely gone. Mm -hmm. There was a couple times I sat on two or three exit cards, and literally every turn I didn't do anything. I never got one exit card. I never got one exit card either. Yeah, and that, yeah was like... that was random. Yeah. And Jimmy discarded three at one point. Yeah. Well, so first game, I didn't have any exit cards. Second game, all I had was exit cards. And you can't do anything if all you have are exit cards, because you can't play... Well, you just and run people like, out of the... And yeah, like but it doesn't matter because passage. as soon as I run them... If it's not so your, it's like if you used yeah. it once you and you need it for like the exit, it's like, well, you're kind of just like out of luck then. I really did like the secret passages. I thought that was a really yeah, cool concept. I, I use I use my... I, 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 I like the one. I like the fact that you really got to use it because I used mine both time and it almost won me both. I won me the first game yeah. and I came in second the second game. I don't think it's in the rules. One thing I might like to see, if it is in the rules, I would like to see it where you can move a guy into a tile you just laid down and then if you played a hidden passage, like onto an exit or something, you could immediately move that room. I don't feel like that would be super overpowered because the hidden passage is a one-time use. 
I just feel like that would be a little bit cooler of lay a tile down, hidden passage, immediately. A way take to like make passage. him sprint to the exit. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, because it's a one time use, I don't feel like that would be that overpowered. So I feel like what, what uh, my general synopsis is I think this is going to go over best with family gamers. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Or two to four player um, filler. Fast filler games. Games. Yeah. yeah. But as five and six, I definitely don't think we would we would probably play it again. No. no. Unless I was playing with my kids in my class, which yeah. I probably will. Um, oh, components. Obviously, it's a game crafter game. What did you think about the components? Um, it was pretty good. Like the little like um, tiles you can put down for like, like locking the doors and the like secret passage and the dice. Like there were stickers. We only had to stick them on once, and they looked pretty good. Did and did anything seem not up to snuff component wise? No, no, everything was quality. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish the tiles were a little thicker. They really? they're well they're more like card stock. They're Wait, not they're like oh, so well, they're they they like are cards. Board cards. Yeah, yeah I like wish they were a little like, bit. I mean, yeah, thicker. Well, they'd be like hard to shuffle though. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you do have to shuffle them. Not really. I mean, well, I've shuffled a bit plenty of old school there's tiles that are thicker. I would have probably like it was like Toronto House of the Hell Wings, like it like cards. It has a I can see the tiles, but yeah, I don't mind the cards. Well, that's being just because they're the main component of the game. I wish they were thicker. Yeah, makes sense. You know, it sucks that like the doors in the hidden passage, even though they're like the size of a dime. They're way thicker than the actual tiles themselves that you're laying down. Well, you're ca they're, yeah. they're cards. <laughs> yeah, but, we're but yes, I do fair. understand. Yeah. I do understand that that complaint. Anything yeah. else anyone has about the game? Solid game. I think it's fun. Like you said, families. I really like that. Even some quick games, you know, they say they're quick, but they tend to drag on. That the easily fifteen minutes. Yeah, I can never see a drag. The box yes. itself yeah. can be small. That's gonna be like kind of like if you have like There is a lot of space left in the box. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's because they're limited, I'm pretty sure, to a certain number of different box sizes. And I think this was this was it. That was yeah. what made it have to be big. Huh. Okay, yeah. But you do have yeah. to stick your dice. That might not be a huge yeah. issue for some I do, I do like but, the, yeah. the style of the box. But there you go. That is yeah, Fate you know, of yeah. the Mortals. I think thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs down, yeah. thumbs up. <laughs> but I will say, and another interesting thing, uh, I think the three of us could probably envision us playing it potentially with our family as they get older. Oh, yeah. Whereas you don't have kids. Whereas I can yeah. see, like, if, if my son was, say, nine, I think he would, I think he'd love this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there you go. The Fate of the Mortals. Those like Micro Cup of Tea, be sure to check that out. Post that link down below. If you're enjoying what we're doing, please be sure to click on that Patreon down below. It really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know what is the dirtiest shirt you've ever worn? The weird one. Mm. The dirtiest shirt you've ever worn. Can you think of one? Oh man, I had a sweatshirt <laughs> from uh, junior high that I still wore up until a few years ago, and like the armpits were like that yellow. <laughs> <laughs> like I would wear it like when I was at, working outside, like in the in the fall and stuff. Wait, like dirty, like soiled, or just like old and ratty? Either up one. Either <laughs> or. Okay, because I've got like easily five of my t-shirts are. Holes in the armpits and should have been white. Now they're gray T-shirts. I easily have five of those. Uh, mainly for me, like when I had like I had like a shirt that was like in the dryer, it shrunk super size, and I'm like, well, I don't want to trade out, so I just like put it on, like had rips everywhere. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you were hulking out. <sighs> that was not a that was not a fun time. Uh, probably the. I don't know specifics, but probably a laundry day. Yeah, that was a terrible answer. <laughs> terrible, the shirt terrible. Right now? What? <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice shirt. Oh, no, the guy was whoa. What's the dirtiest shirt you've ever worn? It's always thanks for your time. Inside, See outside. Guys. Flip Bye. around. Inside, outside. <laughs>